Welcome back. Finally we have a working YubiKey, loaded with PGP keys. Today, we are going to test the keys for signing, and encryption, in Linux Ubuntu. I am also going to show you one of my favorite programs to use with a YubiKey. The standard Unix password manager. Pass. But first, you need a copy of your public key, which we exported into a file, in episode 1. So, you know the drill. You need an air-gapped computer, a Tails bootable USB drive, your GPG data directory backup, and a brand new, unused, SD card, to store a copy of your public key. Let's go! This is the first and only time, that an external hardware device, is going to touch both my air-gapped PC, and my online computer. So, I will take extra precautions. Please, make sure that for this step, you have an unused, brand new, SD card. Delete any existing partitions, and create a new one. Then remove the SD card, and restart, Tails. Now I will remove the items from the desktop, decrypt the volume where I stored my GPG data directory, and copy the backup file into the desktop. I am only interested in the public key. If you recall, we saved it into a directory called, My Keys, inside the GPG data directory. A cool thing about tar files, is that you can extract only what you need. Like this. Now that I have the public key, I will delete the backup file and eject the USB drive. Finally, I will insert the SD card, copy the public key file into it, and shut down Tails. Right. At this point, we're ready to try out our signing, and encrypting keys. I would recommend you watch the GPG series that Cat and Pen made a while ago. There, you will probably find answers to most questions you have, about stuff I will be doing next. So let's go to my Linux Ubuntu daily driver. To use the keys that reside on my YubiKey, I must hold their public key, in my GPG keyring. Let's insert the SD card with the pub key, and import it. I'll copy it to my documents as well, so I always have it handy. Notice, that I have nothing else on my key ring, just my pub keys. 
and no secret keys. First thing I should do, whenever I import my own public keys into a machine, is to trust them, ultimately. I will do that. Done. Now I will insert my YubiKey. And, list my secret keys, again. As we learned last time, the GPG agent, uses a greater than sign, to indicate that those keys are not in your local machine, but on an external security device. Note, as well, a pound sign at the master certifying key, indicating that this key is missing. So, everything is in place, for us to test our keys. Let's first create a simple text document, that we can play with. Let's sign this file. I have to type my PIN to unlock the YubiKey. If you don't remove the YubiKey from the USB port, you will only have to do this once, for each key type. Now the YubiKey's, green LED, is flashing, indicating that physical touch is required to perform a cryptographic operation. I am touching it now. Let's read the signature file. I will verify it. Everything works as expected. Let me get, a bad signature. Just for fun. Now, I will try the key for encryption. I will encrypt a text file, with myself as the recipient. Then I will delete that file, and try restoring it from the encrypted file. As I said, you only have to enter the pin once. Per key type. Enter the pin, and touch the YubiKey. So, we have covered the basics of GPG operations using PGP keys stored in an external security device. To end today's episode, I will show you, Pass. The easiest, most elegant and secure password manager that I know. From the mouth of the Pass developers themselves. Password management should be simple and follow Unix philosophy. With Pass, each password lives inside of a GPG encrypted file whose file name is the title of the website or resource that requires the password. These encrypted files may be organized into meaningful folder hierarchies, copied from computer to computer, and, in general, manipulated using standard command line file management utilities. So, let's install Pass. I encourage you to take a look at the Pass Man page. It is very short and simple, as Pass itself. And the examples at the end, are really clarifying and useful. So, let's set up Pass, assuming that I am going to be its only user. For this, I need my public key imported into my GPG key ring, and its fingerprint copied into my clipboard. This is how we initialize a new password storage.
our data directory is created at home. So, let's say I want to create an entry for an email password, situated in a directory called, email. I enter the password, and that is it. Let's try with a second email, path, and password. If you want to see the contents of your password store, just type, pass. So let's try getting the password for one of the emails. One way of doing it, is just typing, pass, followed by the path. Pass is now trying to decrypt the password file, which was encrypted with our public key as a recipient. My Yubi key is flashing. It requires physical touch for allowing my encryption key, to decrypt the password file. I am touching it now. Please, notice something very important. Unlike with regular password managers, when I retrieve a single password in pass, I only expose a single file to the host computer's memory, and not my entire password store. Now, let's try getting the password again. But say I don't want it printed to screen. I want pass to copy it into the clipboard. I would use the C flag. I am touching the YubiKey. Let's paste the contents of the clipboard into the terminal to make sure. Same password. A cool feature of pass, is the ability to create multi-line passwords. Let's try that. Type the password in the first line, and whatever information you want to store in subsequent lines. If we type, pass, followed by the path, it will print to screen all the contents of the file. But if we add the flag C, it will only copy to the clipboard, the first line of the file. The password. Let's paste. Finally, let's add one more password. But this time, let's do it another way. Take a look at all the passwords in my password store. This directory hierarchy is a graphical representation of the contents of my past data directory. Let's look at it. These are, regular GPG encrypted files and can be copied, moved, removed, and decrypted from the command line. So, let's create a last entry into our password store manually. There you have it. I encourage you to give Pass a chance. One final tip. With some YubiKeys, you will encounter the following issue. You type a command, 
that requires your Yubiki. But you forgot to connect your Yubiki, so you get this message. You insert the Yubiki, and press OK. And nothing happens. Rebooting your PC, will do the trick. But you can also restart the daemon that coordinates communications with your Yubiki. PCSCD. Using your PGP keys from a YubiKey, is a great way to encourage oneself to use GPG more. Because of how fun and easy it is. By keeping your keys on an external device, you are improving your security. A lot. But beware. YubiKeys are not magic. Actually, we are dealing with closed source software. So, two last comments. First. There are other options in the market beside YubiKeys. The purpose of these tutorials, is to show you what smart card security devices can do. And second. If you are dealing with critical secrets that don't need to touch the internet, you can be as paranoid with your YubiKey, as with your air-gapped computer. A YubiKey can be configured in Linux Tails, offline. So you don't have to plug your YubiKey in an online computer, ever. That way, you would have a perpetually air-gapped machine, with your keys segregated into an external security device. So, next time, we'll be using our third and final PGP key. The key for authentication. With one of the coolest things you can do with it. SSH.